Okay, for today, it's solving with exponents. What was yesterday solving with exponents? So it's kind of like just a little add-on to yesterday's. So let's see if you caught what we were doing yesterday. Yesterday, we'd have things like this. 27 to the 2 thirds power. Which part was the root? Which part was the root? The 3. Yeah. The roots go on the bottom, just like in plants. So that's 27 to the 1 third power. And that's the third power means, well, what times what times what makes 27. So that would have been 3. Then you square it, and the answer for this one would have been 9. That's just a quick, that's what a fraction exponent is. It's got two parts. All right, to see if you really understand that. Would you please rewrite this as an A with a fraction exponent on it? This part, you're not getting graded on, but you're going to compare with the kid next to you to see if you get which part goes where in your fraction exponent. Okay, check and see if you get the same thing as they do. It's obviously a, either a four-thirds or a three-fourths, so don't just flip a coin. Think it through. The root goes on the bottom. Check with the kid next to you, as I've seen some people check. How many of you have the same thing as the person sitting next to you? All right. So then, this is A to the, let's see, well, roots go on the bottom. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean you, you want me to assign that pass, I'm assuming. Okay, so A to the 3 fourths, because the root is that part, and that has to go on the bottom. All right. What if you had to solve an equation that said A to the 3 fourths is equal to 12? Well, then... You don't put the 12 to the 3 fourths. The power on the 12 right now is a 1. So how do I fix this? So we did yesterday. You put it to the, yes, to the 4 thirds. You put this to the 4 thirds power. Now that happens to be one that you wouldn't be able to do easily because unless somebody in here is a genius, I don't know what the third root of 12 is. It's not just as simple as like 4, because 4 times 4 times 4 is not 12, right? All right, so this would be a difficult one to do in your head. You could use a calculator, though, but on this test or this quiz you're about to take, there's no calculators because they're all nice numbers. All right. So what would have been a nice number that you could have taken 4 thirds of, like 8? Do that one in your head. And write down what you think the answer is. 8 to the 4 thirds is what it boils down to, because that's all going to cancel. 8 to the 4 thirds power. So did you get the third root of 8 is 2, and 2 to the 4th is 16? Raise your hand if you had 16. Okay, good. Then you're catching on. And now, what if there was a few things to do first? Like, for instance, n minus 1 to the... 1 half power plus 3 is equal to thirteen I think will work pretty well. No wait. Wait, I went the wrong way. So I'm gonna have to subtract from it. Nineteen. There we go. Try that one. Remember, when you're solving, you always start with any adds or subtracts you can do. Write that down and actually try it. If your hands aren't moving, I know you can't be actually trying it. Okay, Dice of Destiny, who should I call on for this one? This is row four, first person, that's you. So what do you start with? And I'm going to save myself a little bit of time and just say that's 16. Okay, bad showing of work, but it's going to work. Next step. Put it to the power of 2, I agree. Now, 16 squared, that's nasty. Okay, so n minus 1 is equal to 16 squared. Did anybody already multiply it out? What did you get? 256 is correct. All right. 
But do you get how easy it's going to be from there? Now all i got to do is add 1, so 257. Raise your hand if you had that. Okay, cool. All right. Then, uh, I think you're ready from yesterday except for one thing. Do you remember the kind where you end up with the absolute value that you have to throw in there? That was the trickiest kind. It was like this. Let's say that. Be careful because you if you don't throw in an absolute value at some point, you're not doing it right. All right, so let's see. Did you start by putting it? Now, don't please don't say times by 3 over 2. It's to the power of 3 over 2. And then at the moment that you did that, you probably said, oh, that's gone, so I have n plus 2. But did you remember to put absolute values right there? Why? Because you just square rooted. You took the square root of both sides. When you square root a variable, you need absolute values. Here's the simplest kind. When I square root this, do you remember the deal where we put that in the calculator, saw the graph of it? It's an absolute value, absolute value of n. And the square root of 16 is 4. And then it gives you two answers. Okay. This may be too hard for some of you, and you won't be able to figure this out. But I don't think so. I think it might be just not being careful. If you take a fraction exponent, that's a half. That's taking the square root. Other ones to watch out for is any even root. If this had been a 4 or a 6 or an 8, any even root, it would have caused that. Okay, and then square root of 4 is 2. 2 to the third, 8. Raise your hand if you had an 8 over on the right side there. Awesome. Now I'm going to get two answers. N plus 2. Sorry equals 8 and n plus 2 equals negative 8 and then I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides and I get n equals 6 and then subtract 2 n equals negative 10. If my life depended on it, if your life depended on it, which sometimes rarely, like astronauts, people like that that are in super crazy um, you know, conditions, that can happen you should double check your results. Sometimes you don't have time for that. Like if you're a pilot and you're making a calculation, do you get that if you go into enemy airspace or even just foreign countries airspace, they can shoot you down? If your mission runs you really close to the border and you screw up a calculation, do you get how you could end up straying into Russia and they have the right by law to shoot you down? So anyway, you, there are times when math could cause you to die if you do it wrong. I'm not saying it'll happen to you personally, but there are people. So anyway, how do I check? You take your 6, you put it back in the original problem, and you see if it actually worked. 6 plus 2, I'm reading only the red here now. Try to focus on just the red. That becomes 8, and then I take that to the 2 thirds, so the third root of 8 is 2, and then 2 squared is 4. Yes, it worked. I know it worked. And I can do the same thing with the negative 10. Stick it in here. And it works because that comes out to negative 8. And when I square, or say, take the cube root of negative 8, that's a thing. You can do the cube root of negative 8. Cube root of this would be negative 8. Cube root of negative 8 gives you negative 2. You square it, and you get 4. So both of them work. All right. Why is it important to have both of them checked? Because I warned you there was one kind yesterday. Do you remember the one kind that oftentimes... The answer is extraneous. The answer does not work. The kind that has what's on both sides? Square roots. So if you see a problem that starts like this, a lot of times you still solve it by squaring both sides, and the, the, the square roots fall away, which is cool. But then you solve it down, and you get an answer like negative 4. And the problem is, if you stick the number that you get, you get the answer is like negative 4, and you go back and stick it in the original equation, It'll give you a negative under the square root, and that's not possible. Does that always happen? No. It just happens a lot when there's square roots on both sides. So be careful with that. Okay.
there. I've reviewed pretty much everything in the old stuff, but now let's look at the new stuff. There's just a couple little add-ons. What if they put them in fractions? And then you have to solve it. Like, this is pretty much a review of yesterday, but there's you see a fraction over here at least. All right, so first step. Well, I can just multiply this out. And I'd have 4 to the 9, and 3 times 2 is 6. But 9, 6 would be nasty, but I could reduce that. You can factor it, you should. So you go 3 times 3 over 3 times 2, cancels. That's really 4 to the 3 halves. And that I can do in my head. So I go square root of 4 is 2, 2 cubed is 8. Cool. That just boiled down to me reducing my power. This other one over here, I have two options. I can go 2 to the x minus 8 is equal to 2. I want you to think about what I just did there. Do you get when these are set up like this, you can subtract that minus that? Okay. But that wasn't the good way to do this problem. It's a way you could do this problem. But I think there's a better and easier way. But, just a moment. Why is this going to work out? Because the bases are the same. Do you remember that deal? If the bases are the same, then the exponents have to be the same. But some kid will say, but the other one doesn't have an exponent. It does. It's one. So then, this equals that. That's a nice, easy equation. All right. Now, there's another way you could have done this that would have been a lot easier. Yes? Hold on. It is 9. <laughs> so, yes. I, I just said a second ago that there's another way that you could have done this. Just give me a second. So, we're going to go like that, and x equals 9. Now, let's explore another way you could have done this. Tell me. So this one has to be double that one is what you I think you're saying. Okay. You thought through a lot of things in your head there, which is awesome. And if a person can see that in their head, awesome. But if not, I need a way to like that'll always work. So here's a way that would have always worked. Do you remember me saying a moment ago that in every equation you start by adding or subtracting if you can. Can you add or subtract anything to fix this equation? No. What's the next thing on the list? If you're going from the bottom up, multiply and divide. Okay. Can you see anything you could multiply or divide to make this easier? Some people will, some people won't. Do you get this is divided by 2 to the 8? So I could multiply by 2 to the 8th on both sides. And that disappears. Cool. 2 to the x is equal to ooh, 2 times 2 to the 8th. Whenever something doesn't have a power, put it in. That means it has a power of 1. Do you see how that's really 2 to the 9th? And then look at that. It's the same base, so the answer is there. x equals 9. All right, so that's two different ways you could have done that one. Yes? Nope, because why? Why can I not do that first and say it's 4 to the 8th? Why can I not do that? Yeah, exponents have to be done before multiply. <laughs> so there is a multiply here, but to actually do it right, you can't do that times that. Because the power has to be done first. If you want to do 2 to the 8th, you can. It's a really, really, really big number. And then times it by 2. That would be legal. But this, this is this neat little trick to say, oh, they both have 2s for a base. Now I'm getting it set up where the 1 and the 8 are the powers, and you can just add them. And then that's cool because the bases are the same. So then the answer must be 9. All right, there's a little more thinking involved in these, but don't worry. On the quiz for today, I don't expect you to be good at this yet. That's what your homework is for tonight, is this kind. Let's go to this page. Everybody try 
the one on the left, hint, you want to make it x to a power, sorry, sorry, 2 to a power is equal to 4, because then 4 can be made into 2 to a power. You know what I mean? You can get them both to have a 2 as a base. So you can do that. And once you have the both having 2 as a base, it'll be easy peasy. On this one, try this one too. I gave you two ways you could solve that. You can look for add subtracts, nothing to do there. So multiplies, yeah, there's something you can multiply by. Or if you'd rather, you can just simplify this all down like we did yesterday. Or no, like three days ago. Those are like top 20 kind of questions. Remember, these guys aren't happy where they are, so they move to the top and stuff. You can do a bunch of simplifying, too. That's probably what I'd do. I'd simplify. And then see if you can solve it. The point is to find out what x is. No calculator. These are all doable without a calculator. All right, I'm going to pause while you try those. You can do. How can I start that first one? I agree. You can make 4 into 2 squared. And that just begs us to put these two together somehow. They become 2 to the... What do you do when they're like this? Do you add them or do you multiply them when they're like that? Add them. So that is negative x plus 8. Or x or 8 minus x. This will bother some people. I'm going to put it this way. Do you get I could reverse that and say 8 minus x? What did I just do again? I just took these two powers and added them because if you're like, I, I don't see why you can do that. Let me show you one off to the side. If I say a to the second times a to the fifth, do you get, that would be a to the seventh. You would add those two powers. So you have to take those power rules that we've learned about how this kind you add and do it here. You would add those two. All right. I feel like I'm explaining something really deep and complicated, but maybe a lot of people already did this. Be honest, how many of you figured out that that's what you should do? Oh, a lot of you did. Okay. All right, so now that they have the same base, I hope you can see that that has to equal that. Negative x plus 8 equals 2. And then I'm going to get rid of this 8, do any adding or subtracting that you can do. And then any multiplier divide? Yeah, multiply by negative 1. X equals 6. My life depended on it. I'd check it and make sure it worked. Put a 6 back in here. And then I'd have, that's 2 to the, if I add those together, it's like 2 to the second. 2 to the second is 4. Yay, it worked. I checked it in the original, and I know it works. All right. Over here, simp, as in simplify. I'm going to ask somebody to do that for me. It's row 4. Person 1, that's you. Dice like you today. I would simplify that to one half, I agree. And then what about the x's? What do I do with those? Move these guys up, I like it, and then they'll be up with the other ones, and that'll make x to the fifth. And now, some people put it like this, totally okay. Or some people put it like this out here. It's the same thing. Because if I put something over there, I'm implying it's over 1, which really means it's back up on top again. Okay, so either way is fine. Equals 16. And then, can I do any adding or subtracting to fix things? No. Could I do some multiplying or dividing? What do you do multiply by? 2 times by 2. And then this cancels that. x to the 5th equals 32. Ooh, I can actually do this one in my head. Cool. So, LP, how do I finish? Um, Not times. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Did I just do a square root? No, so I don't have to worry about the absolute value thing. Okay, it's easy to forget to watch for that, but I just did a root. So make sure you don't do the absolute value. If it had been even, I would have. All right, and then it is two, and then we're done. If there would have been an absolute value thing, we got two answers.
All right. One of the things that's nice about these is you can know you're right. It says x equals 2 at the end. Let's put it back in the original, see if that actually works. If I put a 2 here and a 2 here, this should work. What is 2 to the negative third? It would be better if I put it up here and say it's 2 to the positive third, because then I'll know what to do with it. Remember that when negatives are unhappy, you put them up there. So that's an 8 times 4 times 5. 8 times 4 times 5 over 10 is supposed to equal 16. So let's see if that actually works. I'm going to make this 10 into 5 times 2. And then I'm going to cancel my 5s. And then I got a 4 here. I can make that into 2 times 2. And then I can cancel a 2. And it's 16 equals 16. It actually worked. I stuck in the 2. Made sure it worked. All right. So there you go. New lesson for today. If I had to sum it up in just like one question, it would be this kind. Because you got to get to a place where you can make these simplified first and then figure out what to do to get x alone. And this is in terms of y. That means there's going to be a y in the answer. If you can handle this one, you can handle anything. So try that one, and we'll see if you are at the master level in this. Some people might surprise themselves. It's not that hard. Your answer just has a Y in it. Okay. I hope you knew to move these guys up and put them with the other x's. Now, could you have done that by saying 3 minus negative 2 makes x to the fifth? Yep, that works too. There they are up on top. And I'm going to cancel these fours. x to the fifth over 2y is equal to 1. Now, you get confused when there's two variables. At least I do. So I look back at the original and go, okay, what am I solving for? I'm trying to get x alone. This is the one I want alone. So then I ask myself, is there anything I could add or subtract? Nope. So then is there anything I can multiply or divide? Yep, I can multiply by 2y. So I'm going to put the 2y here and a 2y here, and then this will cancel this. Is x alone yet? No, it's close. I put it to the power of 1 fifth, and now x equals u. Is there any way I can simplify that? Not really, unless you know what 2 to the 1 fifth is in your head. So I can leave it like that. 2y to the 1 fifth power. Now it's kind of complicated. How many have actually figured it out? Cool. Question. Where was there a 4? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I have a 2 on the bottom. That's the same as a 1 half out in front. Totally would have been okay. You should have got the same answer, though, when it was all done. Because you'd multiply by 2 to get that 1 half off of there, and the 2 would be over on the right. All right, any other questions? All right, I know like, I got kind of tough at the end, but that's, hey, you're in an honors class, so it's kind of going to be super easy piece of cake every time. All right, so in class now, you have two parts to your... Uh, Schoology, because you got one you got to do in class. That's going to go in the grade book today as just how are you doing lately. Okay? And get that Schoology quiz done in class. As the other one, it says homework. That's your homework. Now, you do have a nice long weekend. I'm not saying you want to spend it doing all math, but this is doable. Now, that one Schoology quiz should be done in class. The other Schoology quiz you can do this weekend sometime. Okay? Question. All right, I'm going to let, let the video be done here. Have a good weekend.